Hi, Chris Doherty here, technical editor for RV Travel, and I'm joined by Mike Sokol, electrical engineer and regular contributor to RV Travel. And Mike, I have a question about dog bone adapters and are they dangerous? And when we talk about dog bone adapters, what we're talking about are the shore power adapters that you can use to reduce from 50 amp to 30 amp and 30 amp to 50 amp? Well, um, let's give it a qualified maybe. A lot of it depends on the quality of the dog bone adapters. There's really two main styles. One would actually look sort of like a dog bone with a big, thick, heavy rubber cord with two receptacles on the ends. Um, those tend to be a little bit safer as long as they're a high quality unit. Um, the ones that I do not like are the little yellow hockey puck style ones that are either round or triangular. Um, they're just kind of welded together on the inside. Um, they tend to break internally. They're, they're, many of them are imported and they're very inexpensive. I would have to say that probably at least three quarters of the people that email me with a hot skin condition that I help them troubleshoot have turned out to be some sort of a failure of the ground connection inside of those little hockey puck style um, dog boat adapters. Now, I know there's also black ones that are round like a hockey puck or triangular. Do those have the same problems as the yellow ones? Um, the only ones that I've ever done, you know, taken apart and looked at were the cheap plastic yellow ones. Uh, I guess this all comes down to making sure that you buy a high quality unit. Uh, I just had uh, somebody emailed me the other day that they had bought an imported unit that was hardwired, you know, with the with the rubberized piece between it. They went and tested it, and it was actually reverse polarity from the factory. Hmm. So and they said it looked really good, and I, but it was in fact uh, wired miswired. And I've seen this a lot with imported items. So if you can, I would buy American from a very trusted um, manufacturer and avoid saving five or ten dollars on something. I would buy the best quality one because really the, the safety of your family and your friends really depends upon you having a, a good power connection. And should the RVer be keeping an eye on how much amperage they're using if they use one of these reducers? Uh, the, some of them that I've taken apart actually have some substandard wiring gauge inside of them which is dangerous and should in fact be a code violation. I don't know how they get this stuff into the country, um, but you should be limited by the, the current draw that's from the receptacle itself, where people get into real dangerous things is when they plug in some sort of an adapter with a skinny extension cord into say a 30 amp receptacle in the pedestal. And now it's very easy to over amp your extension cord. In fact, I have a few videos that I've done that shows that um, by doubling the amperage rate of, that an extension cord is rated for, it's up to the point of boiling water in about five minutes. So this is what causes fires and things to melt down. So um, always make sure you match the size of any extension cord if you're using any sort of dog bone adapter. Yes, and I know that those adapters do exist that'll let you say plug a 30 amp into a a 50 amp, for instance, I know that those are out there. They, they've got it. They go the other way. And some people will plug into the 30 amp rather than the 20 because the 20s will have a GFCI on it. Mm -hmm. And they'll say there's something's tripping it out. And I don't want their, they don't want to come back at the end of the day with their refrigerator, you know, not running or whatever. Um, and so they'll go into the 30 amp connection, but they'll be using a, a, a 16 gauge extension cord. And mm -hmm. that's just so very dangerous. So okay. don't do it. Yeah, absolutely. Great advice. Mike Sokol, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.